It is a very special day, everyone. As I type this script, Matt Lown, as in the channel, not me, currently has 999 public videos uploaded to it. If you can somehow believe that, I sure can't. And a lot of people have been asking for a 1000 video special. But that got me thinking about what that should be. Some arbitrary challenge to do with the number 1000, like a 1000 part rocket or a 1000 crew vehicle? Hmm, maybe a recreation of the first video that kicked this channel off, except I already did that back in April to celebrate my 10 years of YouTube. But then I had an idea. Instead of recreating the very first KSP video that I ever made, how about I recreate the video that inspired me to actually purchase the game in the first place, inadvertently changing the course of my life, unironically. And that video, uploaded 12 years ago on the 17th of May 2013, was called LAN Party Kerbal Space Program, uploaded to the channel Node. At the time, Node was a channel set up by Freddy Wong and the Corridor Digital guys, filming high energy LAN party videos with lots of face cam and funny cutaways. While these days this isn't really what the channel is anymore, back when they made the KSP video it was very much in its prime. And this was Nico's introduction to the game that apparently resonated with me somehow. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this week's LAN party, where we're going to play the best game ever, Kerbal Space Space program. Kerbal Space program. <laughs> I bought it on Friday, I put 25 hours into it, and today is currently Monday. So, <laughs> one day of my weekend was dedicated to this game, just non-stop. <laughs> to in its entirety. <laughs> it's really sweet. If you've never heard of it, basically it's a rocket simulator where you basically build a rocket, full physics, explodes totally sweet because the physics are sweet, and you have orbits, you got planets, you got atmosphere, you can build planes, it's nuts. You should try it. If you like science, it's going to be even better. Wait, that, that was the intro that you said was so... So, yeah, the stage was set. The challenge for them was simple. Land a Kerbal on the Mun. And most of the players aimed to simply land on the Mun with no intention of bringing the Kerbal back. My astronaut's going up there and I'm going to uh, pack a gravestone. But then... There was Freddy. Freddy Wong was my teenage life on YouTube. He made some absolutely banging videos with groundbreaking special effects for YouTube at the time. If you were on YouTube in like 2012, then there was no way you weren't watching his stuff. And he was the reason I was subbed to Node in the first place, so I personally was rooting for him, even though perhaps he didn't really inspire much hope. So we gotta make sure that we got some... Actually, I have no idea what I'm doing. However, he eventually presented this masterpiece. The Shaft of Destiny Mark IV, and th th there's quite a lot to unpack here. We have some very interesting placement of the solid rocket boosters, a strange choice of crew capsule with no decoupler to separate it from the rest of the vehicle for re-entry, stack separators instead of decouplers, a rather bizarre onion staging setup with these reliant engine stacks, and, well, the results were about as you'd expect. <laughs> oh no, abort, abort, abort! Freddy never made it to the Mun, as you may have guessed. In fact, only one of them actually did. The rest had their missions end fairly spectacularly early into flight. But looking at Freddy's rocket again here, I started thinking that perhaps with a rejigging of its staging, it looks like it has a pretty good amount of fuel, and with the right pilot, Perhaps it could actually do a Mun landing and then return to Kerbin. In other words, was Freddy's failure a skill issue or was the rocket really that bad? So I set about carefully trying to replicate the rocket as faithfully as possible, including the part clipping between the third engines that will make staging a little bit risky, the ridiculous placement of the solid rocket boosters, and of course the wonky attachments of the Reliant boosters at the bottom, so that they sort of curve away from the main core rather than just going straight out. I am of course playing on modern KSP, so some of the parts look a bit different, and of course we now have auto strut, which I think is basically essential for this thing to work properly. The only thing I believe I've changed is that I added some solar panels, because I couldn't see any electricity generating parts on Freddy's original machine, which would prevent us from doing the MUN mission. But that's it, and as you can see, she's a pretty beautiful machine, and I think I did a fairly accurate job recreating Freddy's work. But uh, yeah, I think it's time to stop staring at it and start thinking about launching it. So as you can see, from the speed at which we departed the launch pad, we have a pretty high thrust-to-weight ratio. 
So what I'm doing is, obviously we've got no control of the uh, eight solid rocket boosters, so we're going to just basically throttle down the main throttle to zero and just use the SRBs for the first part of our flight. Uh, and then I'm not doing any pitching or maneuvering or anything at this point because the rocket just wants to spin out of control as soon as any keyboard input is applied. But now we can stage the SRBs and uh, start flying this thing good and proper. So now the solid rocket boosters have been detached, we can start flying properly and Freddy made some pretty clever decisions with the design. First of all we have the onion fuel setup of those kind of outer reliant stacks, so they're kind of feeding into the main stack sequentially, so only the outermost tanks are draining at any one point to keep fuel levels at an efficient level, I guess. Uh, and we also have the mainsail engine powering this thing, which has gimbal, you know, thrust vectoring, so we can kind of control our pitch angle a little bit. Uh, the Reliant engines don't have any thrust vectoring, unfortunately. Uh, I did check to see if Freddy used the swivel or the Reliant, and in the video there was no thrust vectoring of the engines, so I'm guessing he used the Reliant rather than the swivel. And uh, we also have some fins. Now, they're not placed in the greatest location. They're kind of a bit too high up the stack for my liking, but again, those do help with control of this machine. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we are now on kind of the final uh, side booster stage with those four uh, Reliant stacks. Again, there's a fuel line feeding into the central core, so when they detach, the central core stage will be full of fuel. As you can see, over 2,600 meters per second remaining in this stage. We're already nice and high in the atmosphere, well on our way to orbit. So I was pretty confident at this stage that yes, we would indeed have enough fuel to get to the moon. Uh, a backup plan I had was maybe doing a Minmus landing instead of a Mun landing, because Minmus does require a little bit less fuel than the Mun for a round trip. But I really, really wanted to go to the Mun because that, gosh darn it, that's what Freddy designed this thing for. So I'm going to make sure that Freddy W. Kerman, I, I created a Kerman named after Freddy, <laughs> uh, is definitely going to be uh, planting flags and footprints on the Mun surface. Whether or not we'll have enough fuel to get back remains to be seen. I guess you'll have to just watch the video and find out. And also, if you are uh, enjoying the ride so far, then leaving a little like down below always helps me out. And again, if you're enjoying it and you're not already subscribed, then why not hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, all that good shebang. I try and get Kerbal Space Marine videos out uh, at least once a week every Saturday. So um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video and like it, then my other videos are probably things that you will like as well. Uh, just stalling for time here because uh, not really a lot happening on screen. We're just coasting our way to space and Keeping on those Kerbal Engineer readouts at the top of the screen, we have now achieved an apoapsis that is outside the atmosphere, or in other words, is in the vacuum of space. We can go ahead and time warp there and uh, circularize our orbit. And once we've circularized, we will truly know if we're going to have enough fuel to get to the Mun. So here I am creating a maneuver node at Apogee, and uh, yeah, 258.2 meters per second. So not a huge burn. Oh, I'm just deploying the solar panels as well. Again, regret regrettably, I did have to make that one minor change to what was, uh, I think we can all agree, an otherwise perfect design. I mean, my, I, the, I, I think looking at the numbers here, we've got 754, 754 meters per second remaining in this stage. And the next two stages have loads of delta V, you know, 639 in the next stage and 1434 in the stage above it. Guys, the numbers are looking dead and true. We are definitely going to have enough fuel to get to the Mun and have fuel left over to spare. So, congrats. I, 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 according to that video, that was Freddy W's first ever attempt at playing Kerbal Space Program. And I have to assume that this was his first ever rocket that at least he managed to launch. And you know, we can joke about the design all we want, but how many of us can say that the very first rocket we ever designed in Kerbal Space Program was capable of doing a Mun return trip. My, my first rocket certainly couldn't do that. And look, Freddy's genius continues to manifest. I ran out of fuel in the core stage during the burn from LKO to Mun intercept, but rather than staging and leaving two pieces of space debris in the Kerbin system forever, I was able to ignite the stage above it and complete the burn and then put us on a Mun collision course thanks to the fact it had radially attached engines. I could then stage, meaning the debris collides with the Mun and will be destroyed, and we can course correct ourselves to put ourselves back onto a non-collision Mun flyby. And as you can see, that's exactly what I've just done, and we've made a maneuver node to circularize and put ourselves into a stable low MUN orbit. Now there's nothing left to do other than time warp to that sphere of influence change when we can enter the MUN's sphere of influence and uh, perform said retrograde burn to capture. We, oh, we got so much fuel remaining as well. This was like 
I, I, I genuinely, gen I, I thought of this video idea, opened up the node video thinking, there's no way I'm going to actually be able to do this, I'm going to have to think of something else for my 1000 video special, but I was actually shocked that, although yes, this rocket is not, it's kind of a dumb design, right? It's amazing that it can actually do the thing it was designed to do. As weird as that sentence sounds. Oh, I just saw on the map screen that the debris seems to have just flown by and exited the Mun system. I'm not quite sure how or why that happened. That's annoying. Anyway, <laughs> Freddy Kerman there inspecting his cockpit as we begin the most dangerous phase of the mission. Well, I say most dangerous, but the launch probably was the most dangerous, right? Because of that really, really sketchy uh, engine and SRB layout. But this certainly uh, is still quite high on the danger list, especially because we're about to run out of fuel and we need to stage. And those thumper engines are clipping into each other, so I didn't know if things might just explode when doing that. And as you can see, some of the engines did explode, or at least one of the engines exploded, but none of the critical engines that we needed in this stage here. So. All was well. So we're now kind of past the super dangerous staging event. Now it's just time to perform the final touchdown, which as you can see, is coming along very beautifully. And there you go. Freddy Wong's first ever rocket that he ever designed during the first time he ever played Kerbal Space Program, as it turns out, was capable of landing on the Mun. And on paper, we have enough fuel to get back to Kerbin as well. Uh, obviously, with the slight asterisk there that uh, he needed to add solar panels, but given the fact he was able to engineer this on his first attempt, I'm sure it wouldn't have been that hard for him to figure out he needed to add some means of generating electricity. So yeah, Freddy W. Kerman there just on EVA, collecting a surface sample and also doing an EVA report. Of course, the most important thing in any Kerbal Space Program mission, planting a flag on the surface of the Mun. But yeah, that's it. I guess we just need to get back on board the spacecraft now. Now, um, Freddy did add like a ladder to the cockpit, but as you can see on this craft, the ladder doesn't really line up with the cockpit hatch at all. Uh, I think the, 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 the uh, kind of private jet style cockpit we have here used to look a lot more like a fighter pilot cockpit, so maybe the ladder would have made sense in the version of KSB that Freddy was playing, but it didn't really make sense for this version. Uh, but we can just do a little tour of the crib. So obviously we've got the cockpit here, just maneuvering around the chair there. And we can open up the hatch and we have this structural piece. And in the mod free IVA, which is what's allowed me to do this kind of wandering around, it adds a little interior to that structural piece. So there's a, you know, Freddy W. Kerman has plenty of room to stretch out his legs for the long journey back to Kerbin. Got a nice little canyon there below us as we uh, ascend to Mun orbit. Uh, this thing has incredibly high thrust. I uh, almost completely overcooked our takeoff burn because I'm not used to having Mun landers with such high thrust to weight ratio. As you can see, we've got a nice comfortable apoapsis height of 20 kilometers. We can make a move note that's going to be another 120 ish meters per second into our budget. But look how much fuel we've got remaining 509 meters per second, which means we are going to have more than enough fuel to get back to Kerbin. Now, one glaring issue you might have noticed is that uh, we don't have a heat shield on board this thing. And that's because heat shields weren't a thing when Freddy designed the original rocket because it was an early version of early access Kerbal Space Program. Re-entry heating hadn't been added to the game yet, and as such, obviously, heat shields were not a thing either. So, um, didn't really know what to expect at this stage. So I decided, well, I was going to say I decided not to stage the lower engines and fuel tanks, but I don't have a choice, actually, because Freddy didn't add a decoupler. So uh, we're going to try and hopefully use that lower fuel tank and the engines and the landing gear uh, as kind of a means to protect the cockpit, because that cockpit that we're using, I think it's not quite the weakest in terms of heat resilience, but it's definitely up there as one of the weaker cockpits when it comes to withstanding the effects of deadly re-entry. So here we are, just making sure we're pointing retrograde. And here we are, entering the atmosphere. Now, I used the uh, non-retractable solar panels, so I was expecting those to get destroyed. And now we just have to wait and watch those temperature gauges show up. Or sometimes I use using physics time warp just for myself to make the whole process go a bit faster. Whenever I end started doing physics time warp, the thing would start flipping out of control. I don't know if that cockpit has a bit of a lifting body effect. Maybe I'm not quite sure. Uh, so maybe that was messing with the aerodynamics. I don't know. But either way, as you can see, we are through the uh, effects of re-entry and we are going to splash down nice and safely. There's a little vapor cone there forming as we fall to subsonic speeds. And uh, yeah. There we are, passing through a rather thick cloud. Uh, kind of cloudy, but otherwise perfect weather 
who have already come to experience the splashdown. Again, first ever rocket. And it was the rocket that made me laugh back in the day and made me eventually uh, convince me to buy Kerbal Space Program, which uh, obviously, like I say, was, um, was ironically, uh, I don't think it's dramatic to say it was a life-changing purchase, right? I've sort of built a semi-quasi-career playing this game. So thank you, Node Gaming, for providing all those laughs all those years ago. And of course, thank you to all the names on the right-hand side of your screen, and my Patreon, and my YouTube channel members. They get, um, I'm trying to do a few more perks for them, for the paid members, so they get the craft files now, I, I guess including this one if you really want it. And I'm going to try and do a bit more Patreon content, a bit more kind of members content if I can. I'm still trying to figure that out, so if you want to join and support me, then I always appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for watching my 1,000th video. Here's to the next 1,000, I guess.